We're going down the vintage route today, guys. We're going old school. Rewind. Hi guys, so much more is everyone doing? Good, I hope. Uh, what should I say first? This review is a very special review to me. This fragrance is very special to me because it is my mum's, my mother's signature. She has worn this since I was little, so I've smelled it through the years. The vintage formula, <coughs> the newer formulas, and just a whole bunch. This is Dior Essence by Christian Dior. So mum, if you ever watch this review, which I'm not sure if you will, but I'm gonna force you to watch it when I come and see you, this review is for you. I'm not even sure how much you know about what goes into this, I just know that you love it. So this is for you, I love you. Um, it's a very, very tough review, only because it's a classic Chypre. Um, it came out in 1969 first, and then 10 years later, Dior relaunched it. It was the first reformulation. I'm not actually sure which formulation I have, but I know it's not the newest one. What I'd like to do is, because there's a lot of information about the reformulations of this fragrance and the bottles and what happened to it, I really want to point you towards a great blog that I found all about this fragrance if you're a fan of this. There's a brilliant uh, blogger called Bois de Jasmine. I'll post a direct link to the, page, to the page below. Bois de Jasmine, if you ever watch this video, thank you. I had got so much information from reading your um, just wealth of knowledge about this. It really opened my eyes, but rather than me just talk about that, um, go and read it, it's great. So, Dior Essence, this one I think is the one before the newest one. The newest one, Dior went through a stage of reformulating all of their more classic fragrances like Diorissimo, Diorella, uh, Dior Essence, this one, um, and now they're called something. Creations de Monsieur, something like that, and they all come in a kind of that shaped bottle. But um, yeah, I'm not going to go into too much about the different formulations, I'm going to give you the overall feeling and smell of this fragrance. So, Classic Chypre. Classic Chypres are very hard to review. Um, for me personally, they are not my favourite type of fragrance, but this one is an exception because I guess I'm used to it and it's quite, kind of manageable. It's not as harsh and green as a lot of Chypres are. So, what is a Chypre? If you don't know what that is, it's a particular type of fragrance, it's a certain category of fragrance that are 90% of the time, well, 99% of the time, dominated by oak moss. Oak moss is a very green, mossy, dry, dusty, woody kind of note that really give the main character to all classic Chypres, I would say, 99% of them. So, we've moved into modern Chypres now, things have changed, but um, this one is really, really beautiful. So, I'll give you the notes. Now, classic Chypres are known for having tons of notes, and it just goes to show the amount of work and craftsmanship and kind of master, master knowledge that went into fragrances like that. So many notes, so many intricate accords inside of them, so many different characteristics and facets that it really is difficult to describe them, but I'll try my best. Bear with me. So the top notes are aldehydes, orange, fruity notes, patchouli, green notes and bergamot. Patchouli in the top. You see where this is going. The heart notes are carnation, tuberose, uh, cinnamon, violet, oris, jasmine, ylang ylang, rose and geranium. I mean, it's just mind-blowing how many different things are in here. And then the base is musk, patchouli again, benzoin, vanilla, vetiver, styrax, which is kind of benzoin anyway, um, and obviously the thing that this is all based around, which is oak moss. So, I'm actually wearing it today, I'm going to spray it on again. So of course, it's, it goes without saying that the first thing that hits you is how green this is. I mean, the liquid's green, for Pete's sake. It's green, the oak moss dominates, but where a lot of vintage Chypres can be on the rougher side and quite, um, quite intense and, you know, things like uh, Nikki Saint Fowl, it's a very intensely green um, Chypre, as well as Alliage by Estee Lauder. This one to me has always had a sparkle and I've really, really loved that about it. There's a clean powderiness that comes from this Chypre as well. My mum always says, it smells like you've just got out of the shower. So there is a kind of soapy, alderhildic, I can never say that word right, feeling to it that makes it sparkle and it tames the oak moss down into something that for me personally is a lot more easy to like. 
So if sheet prints aren't your thing, but you really like vintage fragrances, I always say never stop trying sheet prints because there's always going to be one out there that will probably fit your taste somewhere along the line. And this one's the one for me. The oak moss in it feels dusty, but it only feels dusty right on the underlayer. The greenness of it is what you feel more than the actual character, like the, the, cause like I said, oak moss can be really dusty and fusty. Like I've always said it smells like old cupboard, but this is a very rich, woody, but also clean and powdery sheepra. It's not like anything else I've smelled before. It's so great. It's so, such a pleasure to wear. I mean, it's obviously throwback. You feel like it feels very 70s. Um, but it feels kind of expensive and glamorous at the same time rather than just a full in-your-face sheep rub. There's a whole bunch of stuff in the middle, but what I get from this um, is more kind of the, the spiciness, like a powdery spiciness too. So carnation must be doing its job there, um, and also cinnamon. Uh, things like violet and stuff like that I think kind of take a bit of a backseat, but it isn't an overly floral thing. You've got a, a nice rosy geranium thing going on as well. But it's, it's got so many characters that it's, I don't even know where to turn. My nose just doesn't know what to do when I smell it. Clean, spicy, powdery, green, vintagey smelling, and sparkly. It's almost got like an effervescent powdery feel to it. Wowzers, I mean, it really is great. Mum, I know why you love it so much. It's, it's great. Thankfully for me, although it's very intricate and complex in the way it actually smells on your skin, there's, it doesn't really morph too much on me. I've let this dry down so many times, well, that many times. Just a oh, closer up of the bottle if you guys care to look at it. It's, it doesn't super morph. It turns softer when it dries, um, but it never really goes vanilla or anything like that. It stays true to its green character all the way. And there is a dryness that comes out a little bit more in the dry down as well, because you know, you've got vetiver in there, which is kind of dark and grassy as well. So it just adds to this whole, sheep layering that happens in this fragrance. It's amazing. That's all I can say really because it is a tough review but I really wanted to kind of try and do it justice for my mum. Um, I hope she likes this review and I hope you guys like this review. If you love vintage stuff definitely try out Dior Essence because I think a lot of people don't... Younger people I guess might not know much about this one because it's easy to go for the poisons or um, you know addict and things like that but Dior have a real good um, selection of proper vintage stuff when they when they first started and uh, this is one of them. Anyway, if you guys want to get this fragrance, head on over to notino.co.uk or .com. I'll post links below to it. They sell it on there, they sell the newest version of this fragrance. Um, and yeah, just have a great day. I'm Arch on my own, click the logo down there to subscribe and I'll see you guys soon, very soon, for another video. Goodbye. We know